Hello everyone, I'm Tommy. Thank you for joining these sessions. I'm the senior software developer at IBM working in the open technology teams. And today we're going uh, to go over the complexity on scaling MI pipelines on Kubernetes using tectons. So to begin with, let's talk about what is tecton pipelines. So tecton pipelines is a project that provides Kubernetes style resource for declaring CICD style pipelines. And it's mainly, you know, construct with you know few main CRDs, namely task pipeline, task run, pipeline run, and custom runs. Um, these are three, you know, major CRD that we use within pip Tecton pipelines. Um, uh, for example, the pipeline run it defines the execution of the pipeline itself, that compose multiple tasks. A task run that defines the execution of a task, which is a, a set of few steps. And also, we also have a custom runs that allows you to instantiate and execute. Uh, custom task, which is able to implement with you know, uh, any custom task controller, which you could define your own um, task logics. And why we want to use Tecton Pipeline to build our ML infrastructure? Well, the main reason is that like, we are need to build our ML infrastructure on top of OpenShift, and OpenShift Container Platform is the industry leaders, uh, is the industry leading enterprise Kubernetes platform, which it brings out of the box of many features for developers, including CI CDs. Uh, and the CI/CD for OpenShift um, platform is OpenShift Pipelines. And OpenShift Pipeline is based on Tecton uh, projects, which offers native integrations with the OpenShift platforms and provides smooth experience for the developers. And out of the box, uh, OpenShift Pipeline is also certified by Red Hat for OpenShift, and it also have enterprise versions av available on OpenShift as well. And that's why we have, this is the main reason why we run you know, secure pipelines are for ML and AI on OpenShift, and this is the option we have chosen. And when we actually look into what Tecton have provided out of the box, we see a lot of the good things. So Tecton will be able to help us run any workloads, able to construct and create new parts for each of the tasks that you have defined, able to have like condition that, um, uh, able to skip tasks when the condition, you know, is not matched and able to pass parameter very easily, so any of the inputs and output can be passed in between multiple parts. And it has like um, APIs to connect, you know, custom controllers, so you wanna have your custom logic for your task, you could also do that. And you were able to optimize, you know, workflow, workflow very easily uh, on the controller levels and able to provide abstracted template, which it help us when we deploy the pipeline on different environments, it's easy to uh, have a different configuration settings that defined on the pipeline levels. And as we kind of view, you know, um, ML pipeline on top of Tectons, uh, we see like this few feature we want to have it in Tecton and our IBM team actually worked with the Tether committee to accomplish this kind of features. So uh, first of all, like we uh, have the Tecton finally, it would help us, you know, like uh, define any like error handling cleanups if the pipeline is finished or failed. And we also have like a very standard API um, definitions and have a lot of way you could abstract the specs so you could actually define a global or cluster-wide specs that are able to share across model pipelines or share across all your tasks inside the same pipelines. And we also have Tecton workspace, which it helps you define the uh, common you know, volume across all your pipelines. And you can also define volume within the same pipeline so all the tasks could share the same you know, our workspace definitions. And of course, we have the uh, Tecton custom task which allows you to have any custom logic that is not provided by the um, Tecton pipeline out of the box. And we also have different termination logics where if you want to cancel a pipeline, in machine learning sometimes you want to just get rid of all the resources that you're running to just free up all the resources. We have that logic, but you can also do the traditional CI/CD where you want you know, the current running task to uh, complete first, then you execute, uh, exit the pipeline, you can also do that. So there's multiple ways you could terminate you know, Tecton depending on your need. And of course, um, with machine learning, we have a lot of parameters. So having different like, matrix and able to loop over those matrix is very helpful. And with the newer um, Tecton release, it actually introduced a new uh, common expression language um, conditions. So now not, you're not only able to you know, have conditions just do like string matching, but you also like, um, have simple common expression language to do the conditions on the fly. So that's very helpful. With all these fantastic features on Tectons, um, we're able to build, you know, um, very good workflows, right? Using Tectons, basically just create a pipeline object, you know, to the Kubernetes control plane, it creates the um, a pipeline CRD, and then within the pipeline CRD, we'll create, you know, task CRD that 
basically just construct with parts, and all those parts will run, you know, each of those steps, which is a uh, container by itself. And this is a fantastic, you know, CI CD platform, and we're able to use them to, you know, build a like simple, you know, uh, ML pipelines in this case. But we see the limitation when we try to scale and build more complex ML pipelines. Um, so some of the limitation we found uh, at the very beginning is that like Tecton, we have no caching out of the box. It makes sense because it's actually just a controller handle workflow. There's no storage for uh, storing cache. And there's no good, you know, uh, Python SDK capability. Let's say for data scientists, it's very difficult for them to, you know, compose a pipeline just using YAML. So it's good to have a Python SDK to help them compose pipelines. And with this, no like out of the box garbage collection. So as you run more experiments, uh, those pipelines actually you know live on Kubernetes, which kind of wastes a lot of, you know this resource in our case. And there's no log archival. So when you actually try to clean it up, there's no way you could you know retain all those logs. And of course, um, when you have more complex pipeline, you might want to share you know pipeline parameter across multiple pipelines. Um, currently, there's no good out of the box way to do it on Tectons. So we see that as a limitation where we have to you know, have all the pipelines that compose in single Tecton pipelines, which limit our scalabilities. Um, and that comes with the next um, line where you compose everything in one single pipeline. With the Kubernetes you know, XCD store, you kind of limit on, let's say, 1.5 megabyte on your pipeline definition spec, which limit the scale of the uh, pipeline size itself. And lastly, because um, ML pipelines, right? You need to understand what kind of inputs and output, what kind of artifacts produce. Um, so we need some sort of metadata to track all those information. So data scientists could easily go back and understand what they actually, you know, run and produce within that pipeline. And because of that, we actually looked into like uh, other different, you know, open source projects, and we found like Q4 pipelines. And Q4 pipeline is actually aimed for uh, data scientists to run any runtime, any framework, any data types. So for example, you wanna just you know, train uh, models using PyTorch or using PyTorch to do like prompt tuning, you could easily do on Q4 pipeline as well. There's no limitation on uh, any library that's blocking you. Um, and it also provides you know, very easy interface for data scientists. Um, so for example, right, it has the Python DSL, so data scientists could define their container spec or their workflow spec um, using Python itself. And because with the native Python, it's easy to just pass input and output between you know, different Python functions, and it would just translate into um, this uh, input output condition to Tecton directly. And then um, in addition, right, because we also have looping capabilities, um, uh, users were able to define programmatic concepts, and those concepts could easily translate into like cloud native pipelines, um, such as parallel loops. And in addition to that, Kubo Pipeline provides you know, uh, multiple layers of optimizations. So first of all, um, the runtime of Kubo Pipeline actually leverage any CICD, uh, CICD runtime you have provided. So at the very beginning, uh, Kubo Pipeline was built on Argos before Tecton was introduced. And our team see like Tecton is very useful for building ML pipelines. So we actually introduced a new runtime to Kubo Pipelines uh, for Tecton. And with um, Q uh, Q4 pipelines, right? You're able to like provide us a common storage for storing experiment and data metadata tracking. So a uh, user could able to track all the experiment um, and any kind of like uh, inputs and output also being stored in this case. And uh, once the pipeline is finished, right? We also have like garbage cleanup and garbage collections where we're able to archive uh, all the um, pipeline history into a MySQL database. So we're able to clean up all the uh, space from Kubernetes, but you could still have all the information that's stored in the database for analysis and future, future reference as well. And on top of that, we also add like um, caching capabilities. So uh, anything you have run before and um, you have no, like, uh, um, you, you want to like just cache the steps and not waste resource, um, once, let's say your pipeline is failed, you just rewind it and you want to cache all the previous steps, you can also do that with Q4 pipelines. And with this, you can see like Q4 pipeline provide a good way to clean up all your um, old pipelines in the um, Kubernetes control plane and provide a good way to, you know, cache um, your workloads uh, inside the uh, existing Tecton pipelines. And what we have implemented, you know, Q4 pipeline on Tecton v1 is more like an extension of the existing Tecton features. 
So uh, we are not, we are really not modifying the Tecton pipeline itself too much. We are more, mostly just still mapping, you know, the uh, user pipeline definition pretty much one to one to Tecton pipelines, but adding you know additional optimization features. Um, so we have seen that like um, Tecton, the car, car, uh, garbage collection, so it, that helps just uh, reduce Kubernetes um, XCD disk size. You know, provide a Python DSLs and API server, so any user request could go to like the um, Q4 pipeline API server and reduce the number of query uh, user need to do uh, to the Kubernetes API directly. And uh, because we actually want to do like caching without modifying the Tecton pipeline itself, in the first version we are actually using uh, part mutation for caching, which uh, even uh, without Q4 pipeline you could leverage this feature with the native Tecton just by adding two annotations. Um, so there's no impact to the Tecton controller logics. And um, at the very first uh, version where we uh, implement Tecton backends um, to Q4 pipelines, there's no um, you know, common expression language and pipeline loops, but we could easily extend those features using custom task controller. That's how we actually leverage custom task controller at the beginning. And q 4 pipeline also provides ways, uh, common storage for you to store the common artifacts, and we also take that advantage and store all our logs, archive our logs in that common storage as well. And uh, with the Python DSLs, it's easy for Q data scientists to produce any helper function and let other data scientists reuse. So it's easy to produce common helper function and able to compose, you know, bootable common function into one simple Q4 pipeline task. Um, for example, we have like users that um, produce logic that wait for all the other files to be ready, then execute. That could be a simple Python function that defines in Q4 pipeline, and then in the compiler code, uh, because it's commonly used, we could just take the same logics and apply to all the uh, pipeline that uh, other users have been using. And finally, it also produce, um, provides a very simple preliminary metadata tracking, so it actually gives you an idea what kind of data is actually flowing in and what kind of data has been consumed for each steps. With all these awesome features, uh, we still see this limitation on the scalabilities. Namely, um, when we do the caching, uh, because we don't want to interfere the Tecton controller logic with, from the beginning, um, the caching only can be done for a part mutation, which we still have to like um, schedule the part. We still have to create the part, construct the part. That is the big bottleneck. And because uh, our power users actually have like tens of thousands of tasks in each pipeline, um, with tens of thousands of tasks, uh, even though you try to like cache them, you still have tens of thousands of parts. So that actually bottlenecks our uh, schedule as well uh, for allocating resources. And because of the um, um, big size of pipelines, um, we are not able to store you know, anything that's more than, let's say, 2,000 tasks inside a single pipeline because of the size of XDDs. And as we actually put all these tasks together, um, by, by the nature of tectons, uh, you want to break tecton into multiple pipelines and just have them all connected together and passing parameter between those pipelines. It gets very complex, and when you try to compose that complex pipelines, traversing that graph and you know, validating that graph and passing parameter ar around that graph is very difficult. Um, so this is why we kind of see, um, even just to traverse like, a very good big graph in tecton, we see bottlenecks doing the scheduling aspects. So this is why we kind of move into a new design of Kifor pipeline called Kifor pipeline V2s. So instead of you know having Kifor pipeline to have be a smart compilers that maps you know um, user um, defined Python uh, definition one to one to Tecton, we actually just have a smart runtime where um, the KFP DSL, KFP SDK, or whatever your local node code uh, interface that you compose your pipeline all compile into a intermediate representations. And behind the scenes, this intermediate representation have all the uh, lot, all the uh, graph definitions, all the uh, requirements for composing the pipelines, and let the backend itself to optimally just uh, map their own subset of the pipelines to this uh, complex pipeline itself. So, uh, from a tecton perspective, you could have multiple tecton pipelines to compose one, you know, uh, complex user intermediate representations. So from a user perspective, you could still see the pipeline be represented very complex, but behind the scene, you break, 
into multiple pieces, so the tecton would not have the bottleneck of like scheduling a big you know graph and traverse a big graph. And to achieve this, uh, we actually introduced you know uh, new concepts called driver executor pu publishers. So basically, um, in the drivers, right? So uh, we actually uh, uh, storing you know uh, parent tags and contacts in the driver, so it knows. Uh, okay, which node is this executor supposed to do? Um, and then once the executor is finished, uh, there will be a publisher that uploads the outputs, artifacts, and status um, to our common, you know, um, metadata service called MLMD. So all the pipelines, no matter which pipeline you use, could all, you know, share the same um, parameter, metadata, artifacts, statics, using just this uh, MLMD metadata service. Um, and this is very powerful because this means we actually could break down Tecton into multiple smaller pipelines and we do see the complexity of the graph itself um, from the runtime representations. And uh, with the Q4 pipeline V2, another um, enhancement we have done is uh, because we have uh, runtime for Argos and Tecton as well, we also create a abstract interface for future runtime. So let's say you want to bring in airflow it would be very easy for you to just uh, add these three different components. One is a compiler, convert you know the Q4 pipeline intermediate representation into um, the representation you want your runtime to run, and then you have those you know uh, files right. Like you could convert uh, your pipeline into multiple pipelines, and when you run it, you have to just create a execution clients to run those you know resources you have produced, and then you also have execution specs. That's where it helps you to uh, modify. It. Um, your underlying runtime specs when you actually need to, uh, let's say, update parameters or update um, a, a, a small subset of the specs. And uh, when we kind of dive in into what Q4 Power and V2 actually provides, um, we could see the driver publisher model actually um, separate into like kind of two categories. So when we actually say driver and publisher on the you know, uh, graph level, the direct, uh, exactly graph levels, you could see the driver actually just produce the parameter artifacts for the parent context, and then see whether or not um, our sub pipeline then, because the user could also uh, produce multiple sub pipelines, we could see whether or not this sub pipeline has been executed, and we can we really cache it. If so, we could actually skip the whole sub DAG and just reduce the complexity of the graph itself. And then once the graph is finished, right, the publisher could just take the information um, from the sub pipeline have produced and just publish it back to the um, metadata service. And then on the task level, when you actually won't need to run a contain, uh, run, run a pod for that particular task, um, the same driver and executor logic uh, exists. So the driver would actually check whether or not this task has been executed before, uh, fetch all the parameters, um, compute the conditions, and then if the cache is exists, then we actually would just skip the execution part. If not, then you, uh, it will just create execution with the publisher embedded. So in this case, the publisher is actually a binary inside the user um, part itself. So we are not adding you know, any extra step. We're not adding like, um, uh, extra containers that um, uh, reduce you know, the user runtimes. And once the user you know, execution is finished, we could see like, from the publisher aspects, um, um, before the um, user action is uh, created, uh, the, the publisher's main job is actually to pull all the artifacts it needs for the user task to run, and then we place all those parameters with the necessary um, parameter from the MMD, then run the user execution command, and once the execution command is finished, then we grab any artifacts that need to be uploaded, upload to the uh, um, uh, object storage that's designated, and then publish you know, all the metadata that's related where the artifact is stored, and while the parameter is being produced back to you know, the MMD metadata service. So this way we don't have to rely on Kubernetes API at all to you know, store all those status, um, you know, know where the parameter is being um, located. Uh, all this information is actually stored in MMD metadata service. So uh, we actually could reduce the bottleneck from the Kubernetes control plane itself. And from a very high levels, um, when Q4 pipelines um, on Tecton first designed it, uh, we have all these kind of driver publisher tasks. Um, actually, is a task in Tecton. 
And as we can see, like this our bottlenecks when we create a lot of tasks inside a single YAML and when Tecton schedule like, a lot of tasks, it actually create a lot of bottlenecks on the schedule on the Tecton scheduler itself. And this is why we as we kind of improve over time, we try to merge all those driver logics inside our um, task controller and pipeline controller itself. So our, our current design is actually able to merge um, the driver and publisher logic into our task controller itself. So the task, task controller could just go ahead and evaluate whether or not uh, this, task, this task is being cached and also evaluate all the conditions. And if, if there's a need, you, uh, you need to run a pod, you could actually run a pod to accomplish your task. But we're also aware that for ML workflow, sometimes you might need like distributed trainings, right? Let's say you want to run array uh, workflows, we, we could just simply just create a array CRD. So you don't have to have a part that's dedicated to run a client. Uh, we could just create a CRD for you and um, the array cluster, the array controller would just be aware of the CRD and run your array jobs. So it's very easy to integrate and reduce the number of parts you need to create in these scenarios. Um, so to summarize, um, you know, Q4 Pipeline on Tecton V2, it brings the way how you run, you know, uh, custom tasks to handle caching, skipping conditions, and handling parameters all in one place. And we also have the publisher binary, you know, run along with the user codes. So you're able to upload all the user task parameter into the ML metadata service. So you're actually able to, you know, reduce the uh, limitation from Tectons as, you know, Tecton parameter actually pass via the, um, Kubernetes YAML itself. So as you put a lot of, you know, parameter inside Tecton, uh, you will have a limit on, you know, how big your parameters. But with this new approach, um, the, pu uh, the uh, publisher basically just push the parameter to the ML metadata service, which is backed by um, current in, in the open source is MySQL or PostgreSQL database. So your limit is much higher uh, in these scenarios. And lastly, we also, you know, publish a, uh, also upload all the problem status and graph structures all in the ML metadata service. So we actually don't have to retain, you know, the, the graph structure in the uh, problem def uh, the Tecton definition and on Kubernetes itself. So as we're actually executing the pipelines, we can actually clean up the pipelines um, because all the information will be uploaded as, you know, the subset of the pipeline is being complete. And with this uh, enhancement, we could see that uh, we've been able to address the part, you know, creation issues um, when we do the caching. So all the cache right now, you don't need to, you know, create a new part. So it would be very efficient from a cache pers perspective. Because of the pipeline could be, you know, decoupled into uh, very small sub pipelines. Graph traversal is very simple with Intecton because you only see like, a subset of the pipeline. It doesn't have to understand the whole complexity of the gigantic ML uh, pipeline floats. Um, and all those information are stored in MMD. So MMD, you could see, it stores all the parameters and uh, pipeline status. And it also um, dramatically reduced the limitation from XCD. So it actually break into a lot of um, smaller pipeline and store into XCDs, right? Um, only small limitation we still see is that um, as our power users still have tens of thousands of tasks, um, each of those tasks still represents by a custom resource on Kubernetes. So as the number of pipeline grow, we could still see some limitation on XCDs. But this is kind of similar to the concept of checkpoints from machine learning where um, all, each of our tasks is actually a record those status um, in the persistent volumes. Um, so we, we could just actually um, have the machine learning pipeline to be more condensed and for any parameters, any status that doesn't need to be stored in um, persistent um, volumes, we could um, maybe just have a more advanced compilers to combine those logics and only pass those parameters in memory instead of, you know, storing all those information in MMD, which, you know, reduce our um, run times. Um, so this is kind of a like future enhancement we're planning to do. Um, and with that, we're going to show you a uh, quick demos on how Q4 Pipeline on Tecton 2.0 has been accomplished. You could see we're using, you know, the same SDK and UI, no matter you're using Argo or um, Tecton backend. And currently with the uh, Q4 Pipeline 2.0, the Argo implementation haven't optimized the backend to run driver tasks um, using HTTP templates. So all the driver tasks on Argo is currently still running on pod, but the committee is working on uh, converting the Argo backend also to use um, 
more like a um, long running server approach, which it will significantly able to reduce the caching time, as you can see. Without that, um, our goal has to take, you know, like at least create three or four additional parts, which dramatically uh, increase the duration, where in tech time we could simply just run a cached pipeline within two seconds. So with this, I'm going to show the demo. So uh, when you go into the Q4 pipeline interface, you could see a list of pipeline you have created. Um, once you click on this, uh, you could actually see, you know, uh, we also have versioning for the pipelines. You could um, pick different versions. In this case, I will just um, first run a version where uh, we have all the um, tasks um, being cached. So let's just create a simple run. Um, so when the pipeline is being cached, you can see it could uh, execute it uh, fairly simply um, over here and complete it very fast. So should be running in seconds. Yes. Yeah, so once the you know pipeline is being scheduled, everything is just pop out instantly. Um, then as we kind of go back. Um, we can see, I think the startup times for the controller itself takes a bit, a little bit, so it, it's been a second, but it's still like very fast um, in these scenarios. Um, and the fastest and uh, usually uh, in an ideal environment, you could see it, it gets down to like two seconds when you run these pipelines. Um, and when we actually get the pipeline run itself, you could see the pipeline actually completes, you know, within a second, even in the uh, tecton. Um, uh, resource perspective and you can see we actually run stuff in this pipeline so we actually run at least four tasks to evaluate um, the context of the graph and then also evaluate whether or not we have the cache hit and all these four tasks is complete you know within like seconds and we queue for pipeline it's very easy for you to just pick uh, which tasks um, being cached so let's do a scenario, let's say we are not caching the training step because, um, you know, sometimes training you have like randomness uh, in this case, so you, we might not want to uh, cache this. So you could just like rerun the same step multiple times, but um, because the preprocessing is always the same because you have the same data coming in and you do the same transformation, so your output is always going to be the same. Um, so in this scenario, you could see, you know, we could just cache the preprocessing part and then just take the same environments um, that produce um, by, by the cached outputs and do the training. So it should see, yeah, it will be able to grab the artifacts right from the cached um, outputs and then do the training. It actually run in the part to do the training. Um, and you could see from the output itself, it could show you um, the artifact produced. In this case, just simple message um, artifact it produced. And then once it produced, you could see this is the new model in being uploaded to um, the mineral storage. So it's very easy to you know navigate in this case, and you could simply just decide which task you want to cache and which task uh, you want to always run. So with this, uh, I complete my demo. So we want to talk about some of the future optimization we're going to do um, with our current designs. Um, because our current designs kind of rely on these driver and publisher models, and uh, our initial implementation actually just um, connecting all the root node um, behind the driver uh, task and uh, connect all the leaf nodes uh, um, uh, connect the publisher after all the leaf nodes, it actually creates an uh, extra layer of complexity when we construct the pipeline itself. So the next phase, we actually try to have our controller to handle all the, you know, like driver and publisher logic itself as well, and only let Tecton to handle the core um, pipeline execution. So um, this way, we actually retain the complex, uh, we retain the same, you know, pi uh, Tecton structures, uh, but able to, you know, add those uh, extra capability to do caching upload status right to uh, the metadata service in the controller itself. Um, and as from the community side, um, we're actually working on a more mature status IR, so we were able to you know upload um, the graph level status more mature as well. So this is why kind of uh, we have some delays on you know migrating this uh, approach to the new you know controller 
uh, all, all handled by controller approach. And then I think lastly, we want to auto optimize the looping CRD where we see looping is basically repeatingly execute the same um, task multiple times. So we actually want to enhance the uh, looping capability to have a, uh, all the looping tasks to run in a long running server and just input different parameters, different sets uh, of inputs. Um, so we actually able to reduce the number of tasks, number of resources uh, that is redundant in the pipeline itself. Um, so with that, um, it completes um, our talk today. So here are the links to uh, the Tecton Pipeline projects, Capi Tecton project for all the optimizations, OpenShift Pipeline for you, all of you who want to run you know, this uh, project on OpenShift. And feel free to um, come to our Slack channel to have you have any questions. And you're wondering how this open source project is implemented in our product, also check out Watson X, which is also composed all the open source technologies in our, our product itself. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any question in the audience? If not, I could take it offline as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>